Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Donovan and in today's video, I wanna go ahead and uh, compare and maybe help you decide which watch might be the best for you. So in my left hand, I have the Garmin 400 245 Music and in my right hand, I have the Amazfit Stratus 3 as you can see right here. So on paper, there's a lot that these things share in common, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about the differences, what they share in common, maybe which watch might be the best for you. So to start out, I wanna go ahead and talk about the price. So the Garmin 400 245 Music comes in at $350. I have seen it as low as 300. There were definitely some sales going on. If you don't want the music part, like if you don't care about the music, um, you can get the 400 245 for $50 less. So. Um, um, 300 is the regular price for this one, um, and I've uh, seen the regular 245 uh, for as little as 250, which is still quite pricey to be honest. So uh, that one is definitely a little bit more expensive. One thing I do want to mention uh, before we move on to the Amazfit Stratus 3 is that right now you can actually get the 645 Music. So I'll leave links down in the description for all these, but the 645 Music actually, so that would be kind of like an upgrade from this watch, uh, is available for 250 or another watch that's very similar to the Stratus 3 um, is the Garmin Vivo Active 4. That one's actually $250 right now as well. Um, so just something to consider uh, if you're thinking about a Garmin watch. So the Amazfit Stratus 3, the regular price comes in at $200. Right now you can get it for $170 on Amazon, um, also directly from Amazfit as well. So um, if you're looking for, you know, pension some pennies, there's no question the Amazfit watches are the way to go. They're definitely a lot cheaper than what you can typically typically get a Garmin watch for. All right, so now I want to go ahead and compare up the build of these two watches. Um, so first things first, uh, the Amazfit Stratus 3 is definitely of the two, uh, the more bulky of the two watches. It's not like a heavy watch, but it's definitely bigger. You can see that uh, just by looking at it. This one has a 1.39 inch uh, display. It's trans-reflective, just like what you get on Garmin. Uh, the name of the technology that Garmin has is a little bit different, but basically it's the same. The brighter the sunlight, the easier it is to see the watch faces on these two watches. Um, both of them are backlit, so you can see. I just turned on the backlight there, and uh, the backlight on the Amazfit just turned on when I flipped my wrist up there. I flipped the watch up just a little bit. Um, so as far as the displays, the Garmin is 1.2 inch um, so definitely a lot smaller than what you get over here this one actually is more similar to the garmin vivo active 4 in terms of the size of the display and actually the size of the watch itself and the build of the watch so the garmin 400 245 music and the 245 for that matter um, is completely plastic the only thing that's really metal in this watch is these buttons here so the physical buttons um, are capped with a little bit of metal um, but the rest of the watch is is completely plastic um, which isn't to say it's bad I mean I've been using this watch for off and on for about a year now and it's in perfectly good condition um, I haven't been using it exclusively but um, it's still in very good condition I have the white one and you can see obviously not too much uh, in terms of dirt on it um, so maybe I babied it a little too much, but the Amazfit Stratus 3, uh, a little bit more metallic, a little bit more heavy duty build. Um, so we have a four button configuration here. Um, so we have a back select and then the up and down buttons are in between. Um, on the Garmin, we have a select button. This is also our start stop. This is our back button. And then over here we have our up and down and then light. So in terms of the button configuration, um, I definitely prefer Garmin and maybe that's just because I'm used to this five button configuration. I've used a lot of Garmin watches in the past. Um, so I prefer this. If you get the Vivo Active 4, it actually only has two buttons. Um, so that's a difference there. Um, but this one is not touchscreen at all. So um, it is completely button based, whereas over here on the Stratus 3, you can do either. So I can, you know, the screen's on, I can go ahead and use the touchscreen or I can navigate using the up and down arrows over here. So these up and down arrows are a little bit harder to find if they were over here, kind of like what you get on the Garmin. Might be a little bit easier, but you know, that's just kind of a personal preference for me. Um, but overall, in terms of build quality, I would say the Stratus 3 is probably the 
the one that fits me a little bit better. Um, I do like how light the 4 Forerunner 245 music is, like just in comparison, this one no doubt feels a little bit heavier than this one. And that's, you know, probably because of the ceramic bezel. Um, that ceramic bezel is going to add some weight. The watch itself is bigger. The battery is bigger. And so as a result, it's just a heavier watch overall. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about some of those areas where these watches are very, very similar. So um, look, we're going to talk about some of the more obvious things at first. Um, so first things first, they both have step counters. So, um, you know, that's very typical of a watch like this. Both have heart rate monitors. I've personally found both of them to be very, very accurate. Both of them have all day uh, nonstop heart rate monitoring. Uh, both are very accurate during workouts. Um, so I have not really noticed any difference between the two. So I've wore both of these watches while also wearing my Apple watch or both of these watches together at different times. And at any given time, they're pretty much within a beat or two of each other. So heart rate, both of them are very consistent. Um, same thing with the step counter. Obviously, you can see I haven't really been wearing the uh, Forerunner today um, and uh, have been wearing the Amazfit watch here. Um, but in terms of GPS, both of them have GPS. Both of them, you can see, have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Um, both are going to get notifications from your phone. Um, so all that they share in common. Now, in terms of GPS, both of these watches have the same satellites. Um, so you can see over here, the Stratus 3 has GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo. That is the exact same satellite you get over here on the 400 245 Music. As far as the accuracy, uh, I found both of them to be extremely accurate when it comes to GPS. Again, I've wore both of them at the same time. They're within, you know, a hundredth of a mile uh, for each mile. Um, so that's really good. Um, I've wore them both with my Apple Watch. Again, same thing pretty much. Um, I've only been using the Stratus 3 for about four days now, but so far it's been extremely accurate. Garmin has always been very trusty for me. Uh, accuracy is very, very good. So um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, both of them have sleep tracking. Both of them also have training effect. So we'll look at that real quick. And everything I'm going to show you on the Amazfit Stratus 3 is, of course, available on the Forerunner. So if I go in here... Um, you can see that uh, it's showing me my training load. I can get that on my Garmin. Um, so it's going to let you know kind of if you're maybe doing it too much. So that's going to put you into the red. You can see right now it's kind of guessing that I'm getting close to that line. Um, but it's still kind of learning me. Again, I've only been using it for four days. It's going to both will give you VO2 max. So that's really cool. Both of them are going to give you a recovery time. Again, this watch is still kind of learning uh, what kind of runner I am. So that might not be quite accurate for me. Um, they both are going to give you race predictions. Um, and again, I, I mentioned this before, just like a day or two ago, this was saying 139 for a half marathon. So it's already adjusted quite a bit because it's starting to learn that obviously I'm faster than that. Um, you know, 125 is a little bit closer to what I can probably do right now. I'm probably closer to like a 120 flat. Um, but either way, these are getting closer as it's learning uh, my workout regimen. And then they're going to give you your fastest times and things like that. So as far as training effect and things like that, um, both of them are going to give you that as well. So I'm going to go into my most recent activity. So this is just a run today. So I think I got to hit this. All right. So that's going to give me all my activities. So, so far with this watch, I've run 46 miles, apparently six sessions. A couple of those were like a warm up and cool down. Let's go ahead and take a look. So all of them are going to give you the same information. So your total time, both are very customizable when it comes to uh, what they're going to show you. Um, so, you know, you can have it show you your average pace, your cadence, your heart rate, whatever you want it to show during your workout. It can show you that your speed if you want. Um, altitude gained and lost. Um, now, I actually will say this is a little bit of an advantage here. This one has a uh, accelerometer, but it also has the ability to uh, get your altitude, whereas this watch is more or less guessing your altitude because it does not have uh, the same sensors that you get over here um, in terms of ele elevation gain and loss on your workouts. Um, so total calories, both of them are going to track your calories based off of your heart rate. Um, so you can see my heart rate for the day. Um, also going to, you can set your zone. So if you want to, you know, go for certain zones while you're working out, you can do that. And then both of them are going to have training effect as well. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show there. 
Um, so overall, uh, a lot of similarities here. Um, both of them have sleep tracking, if I didn't mention that already. Both of them are going to have weather and things like that. There's more that you can get with Garmin Connect. Um, so as in terms of like apps, you can't really add any apps to the AmazeFit. What you see here is what you get. So we have the barometer, location, timer, stopwatch, music, and sleep. Uh, we can get a bunch of different watch faces. You can go online and find a bunch of watch faces for this watch as well. If you want to add some, find your phone. You can go into settings. Um, but what you see here is what you get. There's nothing you can add to this watch in terms of apps. Whereas with Garmin, with Connect, you can add in extra apps. There are third-party apps that are available where you can't do that with the Amazfit Strata Series. So definitely an advantage on the Garmin when it comes to that. The other thing I want to mention, both of them do have music storage. However... A difference there is that with the Amazfit Stratus 3, it has to be music that you already purchased. And so, you know, I connected mine up to my computer. I transferred over like one playlist that I had of classic rock music. And so that's what I have on this watch. Whereas with my Garmin, um, let me go ahead and go into music here. So I'm going to go ahead and go here. We're going to go into the menu. We're going to go into our library. So this is specifically Spotify. So I don't own any of these songs, but I am a Spotify premium subscriber. And so I can transfer all of my Spotify playlists. Um, if you're a member of Deezer, that's another option you can have here. Also, Amazon Music, I think, is another one you can get on uh, the Garmin 400 or 245 Music. So um, that's one advantage here. You can transfer, of course, music you have on your computer as well. Um, but personally, since I subscribe to Spotify, or if you subscribe to one of those other ones I mentioned, it's actually, in my opinion, better because um, I don't like buying music anymore since I pay for a subscription to Spotify. Um, and so that's nice to be able to get that over here on the uh, Garmin watches. So that's definitely an advantage with that being able to connect it up to Spotify or Amazon or Deezer. Um, so that's definitely an advantage on the Garmin. A couple of other things I want to mention that you only get on the Garmin that aren't available on the Stratus 3. Um, so the Garmin has Garmin Coach. So if you want to create like a workout regimen, you get that for free with the Garmin. Um, so if you're like training for a 5K or a 10K or half marathon, personally, that's not a feature I've ever used, but it is available. There also are some safety features like live tracking. So you can give somebody access to your GPS location via live tracking. So that's really nice. Um, also incident detection. So if it detects that you've, you know, had a fall, um, you can also do like emergency. Um, so right now you can see it's not connected to my phone, um, but you can also do an emergency call with this one as well, uh, which you can't do with the Stratus 3. So definitely an advantage here. Um, this one also has a pulse oximeter. So if you want to measure your blood oxygen level, you can measure that with this watch. It also has something called body battery. So if I go down here, it's so right here, here's that training status. Like right now, it's not going to show anything because I haven't been running with this watch recently. Um, so last activity, let's see when my last activity was. It's probably a while, July 21st. So it's been a little while since I wore this watch. Um, so this is your body battery. So it's going to kind of give you an idea of whether you're ready to go for a workout. So you want it to be like at least probably like 80 um, to make sure you're really ready to go for your next workout. Um, so that's what that's going to tell you. And that really is pretty accurate. If it's like, you know, if it's down to like a 20, you're going to know that you're probably not ready to go out for another workout quite yet. And you'll feel that when you go out. This one does also have Ant Plus connectivity. So if you want to wear a chest strap to uh, measure uh, your heart rate, you can do that. Personally, I find the wrist-based optical heart rate sensor here to be very accurate. So I don't really need a chest strap. Um, as long as you wear these watches tight enough on your wrist, um, I found that the wrist-based heart rate is really, really accurate. And I already mentioned that earlier, but I found them to be very accurate. But this one does have the ability to at least, if you want to, connect it up to an AMP Plus uh, chest strap heart rate monitor. The last thing I want to talk about is battery life. So in terms of battery life, both of them on paper really get the same battery life. This one does have an ultra power mode. So um, if I go in here, technically you can extend this one out to 14 days. You're going to lose some of the features that the watch has. So that's that ultra mode there. So that'll give you up to 14 days, but on paper, they both get seven days. Um, and really I found both of them to be pretty much the same. If I'm using the music on the watch, 
while I'm running plus GPS, typically I'm only going to get like two to three days. But if I'm not listening to music while I'm running, I can stretch it out to like four or five days with both these watches. Both of them claim seven days, but that's obviously with a little bit lighter usage. So that being said, um, ultimately what you have to determine is are the extra features you get on the Garmin worth it? Do you want a smaller watch? Um, because obviously if you want a smaller watch, the 245 Music is the way to go. Um, the Vivo Active 4 um, is missing some of the features you get over here, but it does have a lot of the similar features to what you get on the Garmin 245 Music. You just don't get any of that training effect. It's also touchscreen, um, but this one is definitely the cheaper of the two watches. So uh, in the end, it comes down to which one might be better for you. And hopefully in this video, I've given you kind of an idea um, to help you make that purchase. So thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.